All right, thank you so much for staying with us at Trinidad and Tobago. And to all of you, thank you so much for joining us here on the Now Morning Show. I am Natalie Lagore. And of course, as we mentioned, we're going to be speaking about this LPG cooking gas that some of you are up in arms about, as if somehow you never pay a $5 extra for anything yet. So let us get into it with the chairman of National Petroleum, Saddam Hussein. Good morning to you, Saddam. Said, sorry. Good morning. All right. Good morning, Natalie. Good morning. I was correct the first Good time, not so. And yes, the name is Sahir Hussain. Okay. And not Saddam. Right. I corrected myself there. I don't know why I said Saddam before, but uh, Mr. Hussain, thank you so much for joining us. So I think the question that I want to start with is who authorized an increase in LPG cooking gas? So naturally, before I answer that, for context, let me let me just make a couple of statements briefly. Any serious business will consider several issues if they want to be successful. And the first one will be proximity, meaning convenience. The second consideration will be price, pricing, and generally the market determ determines the pricing. I want to repeat that. The market determines the pricing. Mm -hmm. The other is you want to consider is your relationship with your customers and your and the people you have to deal with. And of course, you have safety and um, employees' welfare and whatnot. So having said that, you know, I want to say that the board does not act in a vacuum. The board doesn't get up one morning or convene one, more, one day and say, look, aha, today we're going to do X, Y, and Z. So that we recognize that there was a significant problem in that a number, a large number of our solicitations were not carrying cooking gas. Um, and when we inquired, the answer was that, well, the margins are not conducive to us taking part in this aspect of the business, right? And at the same time, the dealers were asking and engaging the management for an increase. Those who were carrying it were engaging the management for an increase in the price. And let me tell you the reality of, you know, why this became such a pressing issue. The retailers make a dollar and eighty cents on every tank of gas they sell, right? A dollar eighty cents. One dollar and eighty cents. Yeah. I'm not told. Those are the people who, who run what you call gas bars, and that they only have a fueling system, no C store anything. But it gets worse than that. The C store, because of the commercial arrangements with NP, makes twelve cents. Let me repeat that: twelve cents on every tank of gas they retail. Now, how do we get these? How do you get these tanks to the station? The dealers historically would have had their own tanks obtained by some means. And then you have distributors who distribute the gas from NP, who in some instances supply the tank to the service stations so that they can sell the gas. But it all comes back to pricing and the margin that they are realizing. So that understanding if you have to buy a tank for $258.75, and and you're making a dollar eighty or twelve cents. How many times you have to sell that same tank over and over and over, right? Now, if you're making twelve cents, you have to sell that same tank uh, 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 of cooking gas over two thousand times just to cover the cost of the tank. Because there's another problem. You very often you hear in the media or in the, in your local locality, tanks are missing. And targets for theft of tanks are usually the gas stations, the service stations. So that when a tank is stolen, you have to pay for the tank. You either pay the NP for the tank or you pay the distributor for the tank. $258. So if you have to pay $258 for a tank and you make it 12 cents, it just doesn't make any sense at all. Right? So that's the first thing I want to say. So that understanding we had a problem, and as I said, business is about proximity. 
we have a wide network across the country that is strategically located. So we have the locations, but we're not selling the product. The other thing you had to look at there for was the price. And the, you had the dealers engaged in the management in that regard. So the process is that the management will bring the notes. The board will consider carefully the notes and then make a decision. But I want to make another point. I said the market will determine the price. The price official, officially has been $21. But I'd be hard pressed to name one place where it, which sells at $21. All right, Mr. Hussein, I'm going to just check in with my coworkers. So how much you pay for a tank yeah. of gas? Pardon? 28 Pardon? So I'm just asking the people around me how much they pay for it. So Sia says he pays $28. How much you pay? You, uh, Rockers pays 26 How much do you pay, Nicole? I have an electric stove. She has an electric stove. How much do you pay, pay um, Gobin? 26 Gobin pays 26 How much do you pay, Nicholas? Wow. So she, he will pay 22 Andrea, how much do you pay? So we have two people in here who pay 22 We have two 26 We have 28 I pay 23 so I get your point in that you're hard pressed to find anywhere that sells a 20 pound tank of gas for $21. Everybody's charging over the price anyways. So the board decided that, okay, based on what management said to it, that it was going to include a service charge. What was the service charge? I mean, how much is the service charge that it determined to add on to that $21? So understanding what the market was saying, and the market price was $26 on average. There are places, yes, and you might get it slightly cheaper, or in some instances more, because I understand to one Blanchishers and those path long uh, rural areas, they pay up to $30. In fact, 15 years ago, I was buying in Blanchishers um, LPG for $30 a tank, and that's 15 to 20 years ago, I'd say that to me. So understanding that the median was between $26 and $27, you notice we were careful not to say, look, we're giving you liberty. You have the liberty to sell at what you want. We said you are, you know, in a position where you will increase yourself between $3 and $5 more. That's what the note said. Making that the top figure at $26, which is where the market on average is. And, and that is borne out by the guy in the newspaper report where this story broke from Maracas, the Maracas operator. He said quite clearly in the um, article, if I remember correctly, that the dirty price was between $26 and $28, which bears out, you know, and... Yeah, but the reality, Mr. The, the reality, Mr. Hussein, is that even though right now a lot of people will be selling it at $26 and $28, even $30, is that once the margin goes up, they're going to up their prices anyway, even though they were already selling over the $21 that it is stipulated at. So, I mean, it's not to say that we'll give you the freedom, you know, the, or the liberty to set a price and then leave you um, to do what you want. And again, there's so many, naturally, there's so many um, there are posts on the outside also that it's going to be competition. So that competition, as I said, the market itself determines prices, and I think we all understand that. Now, there's a reason for, you know, Toko and Flashy shares to be high, and we understand that the, the, the means by which they have to get the product into the areas. But in the, the more urban areas or where the product is readily available, you obviously are going to get it at a cheaper price because of competition. So as I said, we took a decision to um, we have proved, you know, to actually have to careful consideration and we said, look, let's put, you know, um, a margin by which it doesn't exceed what is happening or what the market is saying at this point in time. All right. Right. So, but, and but that even is so, let, let me challenge. Let now, me the challenge. other point, let me make the other point. You know, having made that decision, the board doesn't want to implement that decision. The board approves it, management then takes it up and run with it and do all that is necessary to get the um, decision implemented. So that in itself takes some time, preparation, and whatnot. All right. So the board doesn't have a clear sight of when this decision is going to be implemented. Uh, you expect it's going to be implemented in a reasonable time. 
So the board was not involved in, you know, selling all these issues to the dealers and whoever else. Um, these notices. We'll, that's, the, that's the role of the management. But what's the due process, though, Mr. Hussain? What is the process in terms of, you know, when these decisions are to be made in state enterprises, how does it go? Is it management to board to cabinet, back to board, back to management? What is the process? No, it does not. For practical reasons, you have to do that. And you have to run to management. management I'm sorry, run to cabinet. Cabinet doesn't have time to do anything else. So normally, if there's something you feel uh, you know that's going to um, impinge on what the government does, you have a conversation with your minister because the minister doesn't micromanage. Eh? You are given general directions. Hopefully, you have people on the board with the uh, requisite expertise to deal with these, uh, these issues that are likely to crop up. And the board, you know, um, the, the the board is there to ensure that the business is run in the way it ought to be run as efficiently and as productively as possible. In this case, as I said, I want to reiterate, you recognize that the customer, our customers, were not having the ready, ready access that we think they should have in terms of accessing LPG. Because as a state enterprise with about 118, 116 locations, and only a few carrying the LPG, which is also our product, Mm -hmm. We feel it's important that the but, stations carry the product because they were easily and readily available and accessible. Mr. Hosan, was there a cabinet note, though, approving this uh, service charge? There was none. Um, and, you know, we have apologized for that because, think, and I'll tell you why it was, um, we overlooked it. The market for years, and for years this price, this price, this regulated price was set. But the market itself outside, for years, has been at a particular level. So that it was an oversight, it was an, it was an error on our part. We have apologized, but we just went ahead, uh, you know, given the fact that for years, it's not something new introducing. Yeah. For years, the market has been where everybody knows where it is. So all those who are commenting know fully well that, you know, at the end of the day, this is what we all pay. But the product depending on your location, right? Even though it's a regulated product. I mean, the same thing goes for kerosene, you know. For kerosene is a regulated product, but you will never, you will hardly ever get it at the regulated price as compared to fuels. Right. All right, uh, Mr. Who signed, just stand by for us. We're going to go to our net or feel good moment, sponsored by Nest Cafe. And we're back with you. We're talking to Said Hussein, the chairman of National Petroleum, talking about the, as, as Roka said, the, the increase in the short increase, the short increase in LPG uh, cooking gas. And of course, there is an uproar. And we're just trying to figure out why I even was getting so excited. According to Mr. Said Hussein, of course, they've apologized to the cabinet because they took a decision, you know, because the, the minister can't micromanage. And he said that the decision that they took was well in keeping with where the market value for LPG was anyways. So there was a cap of $5. So there was 3 to $5 service charge that was allowed to be added on. But people complain because somehow 3 to $5 is going to kill them. Good morning and welcome back, Mr. Hussein. Yes, morning. I want to make another point, I think, which is important in the context of the discussion that's been taking place on the outside. And I want people to ponder this. The dealers were asking us for an increase. We agreed that you should get an increase. And immediately you ran to the press to complain that, look, MP has done something wrong. They have given us an increase. It's not, you Are know, you talking about the strange. Petroleum Dealers Association? Well, if they are the ones who did it, I'm not saying that they are the ones who ran to the press. But if they did it, isn't it passing strange? that you've been asking, telling us that you need to get an increase in the margin, an increase which I want to emphasize will just fit into what the market is saying at the point in time when the market is charging. And the, the very moment you get that, um, you know, permission to go ahead, it appears in the press as though NP has done some criminal act and the board has to resign, board ought to resign. 
right? And I, you know, in talking to my board members, resignation or dismissal holds no cool no fear for us. Eh? It's not about office, it's about getting the job done. Yeah, but I think the general feeling on the ground, I mean, people, people don't want, seem to want any increases at this time just because so many people lost their jobs and so many people have been affected negatively by the pandemic. And I think that's where you're seeing the uproar coming from, apart from if it's the Petroleum Dealers Association or the Petroleum Dealers Company, whatever it is, is that the people on the ground were not in support of the reason cooking gas because for some people it's, it's, it's basic necessity. But naturally, we're missing an important point. It's not a raise in gas. That is what the market is paying, regardless of where they were getting it from. It's not an increase. And I bet you, I'll bet you, if at the end of the day, there's a mandate that everyone has to go back to $21, LPG will become like US dollars yet. Very few people. Very, very few people, even the trucks that run across in your neighborhood, will be willing to sell LPG. And, and let me make it big. We're missing an important point. We didn't raise the price. We gave permission to go to where the market was so that the 116 stations that are close to the public, that belongs to NP, a state enterprise, the people's company, will be able to get LPG readily available to you and instead of having to wait for when truck pass. In fact, we have we have we went so far as three months ago the board took a decision to ask management to set up a platform where you can call from your home, you can call one of the distributors and have them deliver to your home. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's something we've been considering how to make the business more and more relevant, more and more efficient. That's all we did. That's all we guilty of, eh? uh, really, and, and maybe of not informing the minister when we should have. But I explained why we didn't do it. Mr. Ho Mr. Hossain, is NP strap cashed? Strap for cash? Well, like everybody else, and the, uh, if, uh, the NP is a reflection of the economy. The economy has been hard hit by the COVID pandemic. It stands to reason that um, NP will also be a impacted mm -hmm. and 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 was this but let me make the point again natalie this oh. this this decision to this had to do with the dealers selling the product and making it available but when you look at i mean there's a there's a share i think they they, they want the email the note says 60 40. 60 40 of the margins we're talking about really makes no difference or impact to np's bottom line here the decision was all about getting the, the dealers to sell mm -hmm. so that the public has re is, you know, ready um, product on their doorstep, literally. But we're talking about 12 cents per cylinder. How would this 3 to $5 have affected that, uh, that, 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 that price? Well, it makes it a lot more feasible because it means that the 3 to $5 then cover their costs, it covers because at the, when you go to the station, you don't want to pick up a LPG, LPG cylinder. Eh? There's somebody, there's an attendant to collect your tank, to you know, put it in open package. Give it. So that's a cost to the dealer itself. Um, and as I said, the risk of theft, which is very, very high and happens frequently. I told you the cost of the tank, if it's stolen, that the dealer has to pay $250.75. So if you're making 180, that same tank that you 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 lost, you have to sell a new tank. You know, as I said in the case of the 12 cent, two over two thousand times just to recover the cost. Right? So let us be reasonable. And again I want so to then, emphasize to the public, please, we have not raised the price of anything. So then why pull back what that the market service charge? Is telling at this point is that the issue was that the, the, the mischief we were trying to address is availability and get it given the dealers a decent margin so they will be encouraged to sell the product and have it available to the public. Well I Simple. don't even know if, if if it's if it's really in the dealer's interest because the dealers have always believed that NP shouldn't be in the gas business. So I'd find it passing strange that 
the Petroleum Dealers Association now find you I do I don't understand the relationship. I really don't. Because it seems to be a sweet and sour one. Well, I I myself am confused about the relationship because I held the view. In fact, when I first became chairman, chairman, I had a meeting with the dealers and I told them that look, it was in their interest to get involved in the PDA. So that when we speak, we don't speak to individuals, but we speak to an organization that is well um, run. Um, that has not happened. Um, and you have had the PDA constantly and publicly is no secret, bashing MP, making the claim that MP should not be in business. But I want to tell you something. About a year ago, there was a shutdown. Um, were it not for NP, the whole country would have shut down and not have yours. Oh, yes, I remember we when Unipet had that shut down. Fill that void when certain dealers decided they were not going to open. We were able to seamlessly fill the void, fill the void, Mr. and Hussain. ensure that nothing in the, you know, the, as though nothing had happened. Mr. And that's Hussain. the importance of NP. Um, and NP, let me, let, let me make the point too, Natalie. NP, you know, provides a service at a cost that's prohibitive to MP. People really don't understand. A number of the stations we run in far flung areas. NP operates those stations at a loss. NP brings up fuel by ship to sea lots because Point Effect cannot supply the whole country with the facilities they have there. So we bring up 70% of our volumes by ship. That comes at a tremendous cost. We also ship to fellow citizens in Tobago. That is an even larger cost to NP. And we bear the state, as a state company, we carry that cost. If, if, if we, um, you know, if PDA gets their wish and NP is out of the loop, who's going to take up that responsibility to the people of Trinidad? Unipat. NP is not a perfect organization. We have challenges like most state enterprises do. But, you know, we are working around those issues and addressing them conscientiously. Mr. Soberly, Mr. Fusain? making, you know, making, trying to make the proper decisions so that today. I want to make another point. In the past, Mr. every Monday Mr. morning. Mr. Hosein, we don't have, we really don't have time for any more points. My, my final question to you is that understanding all that you just explained, why did you all roll back that 3 to $5 service charge? We, even though we roll it back, Natalie, that is not going to make a difference to the market. It means that, it means that at this point in time, until we could find a new way forward, dealers who are not supplying, which is the majority of the service station, not supplying the LPG, will not be interested in, in, in selling the product because it makes absolutely no sense. The All public right. who should be having ready access to the product will just have to wait until that truck buys or use whatever means they've been using in the past. Right. This is all about you know making the business more efficient, making it more relative to the customer and what have you. Unfortunately, you know, and it's really, really strange, given all that I've said, <coughs> that there are people pursuing this line, you know, as though the sky has fallen. I mean, close by saying we made a mistake, but the, the, the price is not going to change tomorrow for anybody. Because thirty dollars in bank shares, it continues to be thirty dollars. Toko, same thing. East West Corridor, whatever the price, twenty three to twenty six or twenty eight. It's going to be the same thing that this discussion we have in. You, you know, we engage in a discussion that really. Right. All right, Mr. Hussain, I want to thank you so much for speaking with us this morning, and I am sure that the issue will it will solve itself. It will be resolved. So all I the best to the board. Thanks very much, and thanks for having me this morning. All the best to you and your um, um, co-hosts. You're most welcome. Chairman of a National Petroleum, Said Hussain, they're talking to us about the decision that they made. Of course, they've apologized to the minister and to the country, but he's saying, price ain't change where you are. Still the same. 26 is 26, and 30 is 30. Yeah, it will remain the same. Let's take a break and come back with more inside the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm. Have left on the sun